So as I said, the CG has to be in front of the aircraft, right? Um, there's one more thing I would like to add to this. If you look at this, and if you would plot CM versus alpha, and we have done this before, right? And the graph has to look some, something like this. In this case, the slope here, CM alpha, would be less than zero. And you would have, at alpha trim, you would have CM equals zero, right? That's the whole idea that the curve should look like this and you would have a CM zero to be positive. So CM equals zero at alpha <coughs> equals trim. So you need that, that kind of thing. So if alpha is increasing or decreasing, you need to have a negative moment, right? If the airplane is going up, you need to have a negative moment. So for a positive alpha increase, you need a negative moment. And that's what you're seeing here. If alpha is increasing, right, you, have, you will have I mean, sorry, if, if, if alpha is increasing, yes, if alpha is increasing, you will have a negative moment, you see? You will have a negative moment if alpha is increasing. That's what this graph says. If alpha is decreasing, we have done this, I think, uh, last week or the week before. If alpha is decreasing, then you have a positive pitching moment. So alpha is decreasing, you have a positive pitching moment. That gives you stability, right? So <coughs> this, this, this has to be like that. Now. This is alpha is less than zero. Now, here's, here's my question. Can we make this alpha, CM alpha a little stiffer, basically for the same alpha change? Is it possible to make it a little bit more, uh, generate more moment for the same alpha change, in other words, right? Would it be possible to uh, have an airplane where um, the, the, the alpha uh, change would induce more moment. Right? In order to get more moment from this, you would have a curve. Let me put this in another color. Sorry. If you, it, it, the curve sh would have looked like this. Right? this being CM alpha, CM here. So if, if the curve looks like this, right, for the same alpha change, this one would induce this much of moment, but this airplane would induce this much of moment. So much stronger moment for the same alpha change, you see? So if I have an airplane that has a bit of an alpha disturbance, will it be a small moment that will bring it back or will it be a big moment that will bring it back? That depends on the slope, right? The steeper the CM alpha slope is, the bigger the moment will be to restore the, the disturbance in alpha. Can you see that here? Do you want me to plot this a little bigger? Is that clear? Yeah, it's clear, right? I mean, this is alpha trim. The thin line is one of the airplanes and the green line is another. This is supposed to be a line, the green one. So that's another one. So for the same alpha disturbance, the thin line is producing this much of moment. But if the alpha, if, if for the green one, for the same alpha disturbance, you're producing a lot more moment. Same thing on the other side. So the steeper the moment, I mean, the steeper the CM alpha curve, the steeper the CM alpha curve, the more restoring moment you will have from that airplane. For a small alpha change, get a lot of moment. So put it in another way, if you had an airplane where the curve would look like that, 
Again, alpha trim is here. For the same moment, for the same alpha, alpha disturbance, the restoring moment would be a lot less. So you would have an alpha disturbance and the moment will be really small. Right? For the green one, you give an alpha, for the same alpha, you get a lot of moment because of the steepness. You see that, right, in the graph. So, for this, is, they have both, CM alpha is less than zero for both. Okay? However, the green one is producing a lot more moment for the same disturbance. Right? Okay? So, can we adjust how much moment we produce on an airplane now? Can we make it, can we make my, can I make my airplane uh, a green airplane like this one or the red airplane? How would I change that geometrically? We go back here, look at the formula. If you have a large CM alpha, you produce a lot of moment for the same alpha. And all you need to do is really make this distance larger. Right? Positive but larger. If you make this distance smaller, then you get the red one. You see? You understand that? So you can adjust now by changing, lo changing the location of the CG. If there's a disturbance, how fast it will come back. If you have a disturbance in alpha, you can get a very quick back, a very quick restoring moment if you, if you make the distance between the CG and the neutral point larger and larger. Making the CG to the front, neutral point to the back. Okay? And if the distance is large, here, then you will get a lot of fast movement coming back. Is this, is, if this distance is small, then the restoring moment will also be small. If this distance is equal to zero, you have no restore, uh, restoring moment. You see? Okay? Therefore, this distance here, this distance here, basically the distance between the CG and the neutral point is an important piece in the story. Okay, the CG must be in the front for stability, but that's for static stability. Now, speaking of dynamic stability, right, how fast will it come back? Will it have an oscillation and things like that? Now, this distance becomes important. If the distance is too much, you will have a lot of restoring moment by a disturbance in alpha. If the distance is small, then the it will be small. If it moves to the back, the CG, then you suddenly have an unstable airplane. Okay? So therefore, this distance is, very, is an important distance in, air, in, in aircraft design. Okay? This distance we call the static margin. Okay. It is the distance, it is the distance between the CG and the neutral point. Okay. And the way we define it is like that. Kn is equal to C bar Hn minus H. Okay. So it is the distance Hn, position of the neutral point minus h, so c bar is, is the chord, is the reference length, so this is the length kn, okay? And since the neutral point is hopefully at the back, a positive static margin will indicate a, sta a static, uh, a stable airplane, okay? hn is the position of the neutral point, hopefully it is in the back, cg is in the front, airplane is statically stable in the longitudinal direction. The distance 
is called the static margin. So if it's a positive static margin, we will say the airplane is stable, which means the CG is in the front, which means CM alpha is less than zero. If the static margin becomes larger, the airplane becomes, I, I don't want to use the term more stable because it really doesn't mean much, right? It just means that if there's a disturbance in the angle of attack, you get a bigger moment, right? To rest the restoring moment will be bigger. If the static margin is smaller, the restoring moment will be smaller, right? Alpha restoring moment will be smaller. If static margin is zero, there is no more restoring moment, okay? So if you have an alpha, nobody will bring you back. If you have CM alpha negative, which means the static margin is negative, it means you will not have a restoring moment, it's quite the opposite. You will have, what do you have? Something that will die, you will have a moment in the opposite direction which, may, which will make it unstable altogether, right? If the CG moves to the back. Is that good? Very fundamental subject here. Any questions? Static margin, CM alpha, these graphs, restoring moments, this whole story here. No questions? Okay, so here's what we can do. We could, we could actually um, plot this graph one more time. I mean, this is a graph that you really have to have in your, in your head, okay? You have to remember this, this graph. All right, alpha trim and CM0 must be positive and CM alpha is negative in all this, right? Here we know for this one, we, would, we could easily say, right, the HN is bigger than H, okay? It's, it's, it's simply this, right? You have an airplane and say this is the CG and this is the neutral point. This is the neutral point. So uh, in, 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 the, in, in all these equations that I had, I, I took the, 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 the leading edge as the, as the reference point, but you could easily take this location also at the, at, at, as the reference point. It, does, it wouldn't make any, any difference. This would have been a function of Hn, right? This would be uh, H uh, C bar, and we could use um, this one here uh, as uh, H neutral point C bar, okay? So if you're looking at this picture, neutral point is in the back, CG in the front, and you have a nice CM alpha less than zero, okay? So let's say it's a different airplane and you move the CG towards the neutral point, let's move the CG towards the neutral point, okay? You will suddenly have an airplane that will have less CM alpha, okay? Still HN is bigger than H, okay? So still the CG is in the front, but the distance is smaller, of course, right? The distance became smaller. So for this case where you have just this, you suddenly have Hn is equal to H, okay? That's where the neutral, this is the definition of the neutral point, the CG is on that point and therefore there's no restoring moment, okay? No slope, slope is equal to zero, CM alpha is equal to zero, that's what it means, you change alpha, CM doesn't change, okay? If this was the case. And if you have in fact something like that, what do you have now? you have Hn is smaller than H, which means the CG has actually traveled all the way to the back. Okay?
Any questions on this? It's kind of an important thing. Okay, so uh, one more thing that I would like to um, tell you, you know, um, let's exercise this a little bit more. Let's say I have an airfoil, okay, and let's say the CG of the airplane, of that airfoil or that little wing, you know, I might have a two-dimensional wing if you would like to, in the wind tunnel, okay, and I um, attach this little wing onto a little surface like that and let's say this is a CG, okay? I attach it at the CG and I blow air on it. So this is now happening in the wind tunnel, okay? Let's say for a moment that the aerodynamic center is at the back of this aircraft. Uh, of this of this little 2D wing, let's say. It's in a wind tunnel, we are in a wind tunnel. And we have a little 2D wing. We can't really put an airfoil into a wing, right? An airfoil is 2D, so it would look like a paper. So that paper doesn't produce anything, you need to have something, right? Okay, and say, let's say this is the aerodynamic center of the aircraft, all right? Okay, so let's say this is in trim, trim or in equilibrium, and it flies nicely, it has a so on and so forth. Let's say I give it a disturbance, okay, and suddenly the aircraft, I mean the, the, the wing, pitches up, okay, let's say it's pitching up. And when it pitches up, what's going to happen? The lift, because you have a higher angle of attack now, right? This is the angle of attack, this is the court line. You have a higher angle of attack, what's going to happen to the lift? It will increase. So if the neutral, if the aerodynamic center is at the back, lift will increase, and therefore, will it bring it back? Huh? Yes, of course, it will bring it back, right? Because the lift is at the back, it will restore it. So aerodynamic center in the front, this little wing has a CG at the front, so a little angle of attack, lift at the back, it will bring it back. Is that good? Okay, let's look at the opposite one. Again, let's say I have a 2D airfoil here, or a, a little wing. Let's put the CG at the back, okay? I put weight on the back and the CG is over here now. And let's say the aerodynamic center is in the front. And again, I blow air in it. Let's say this is an equilibrium, it is nicely staying there. Let's give it a little disturbance, let's, let's disturb it a little bit. Let's say the aircraft, uh, the, the, the wing is pitching up. Pitching up, more angle of attack, what's going to happen? More lift? What's going to happen now? You have more lift suddenly. It is going to give even more alpha. Right? More alpha means more lift. More lift means more alpha. So it will go here. Okay? So it's a very similar concept. Even if you had a 2D wing, if the aerodynamic center is at the back, the CG is at the front, you are good. Okay, because any alpha will give you a lift that will restore it. Okay, but if the aerodynamic center is in the front, any lift will even diverge it further if the CG is at the back. Understand that? It's the same concept. And this is what we have just found from the equations the CG must be in the front, but you see it from this physical representation. Okay? So therefore, the neutral point of the airplane is sometimes called the aerodynamic center of the aircraft because it really acts like an aerodynamic center. It is, it, 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 it is where lift and drag must be acting on that airplane. Do you have any questions here?
Let me take it one, one step further. Let me take it one step further. Let's say I have an airplane. And let's say this is the CG of the airplane. And let's say this is also the neutral point. Let's say this is also the neutral point. Okay? This is the point where CM alpha is equal to zero. So for this airplane, CM alpha is equal to zero. For sure, because the neutral point, the CG is at a point, we moved it to the point where CM alpha is equal to zero. Okay? Good. So here's my question now. And let me do the other one. Let me try to plot the other case. Same airplane, CG in the front, and here's the neutral point. Okay. And here CM alpha is greater than zero. So, for this case, if CM alpha is equal to zero, which means around the CG, if alpha is changing, the moment should not change with respect to the center of gravity. So, where should lift and drag act on this airplane? Should it be over here or can it be somewhere else? Let me just start with the case if lift was acting somewhere else. Let's say the lift was acting, I don't know, here. Let's say for a moment lift is acting here, okay? If you have a change in alpha, if you have a change in alpha for this airplane, would you have a moment around the CG because of this alpha change if the lift was acting here? Yes, because alpha would be changing, lift would increase, and therefore you would suddenly have a moment around the CG if the lift was acting here. However, this cannot be because we have established if CG is over here, the neutral point, CM alpha is equal to zero. So the only way for the lift to act is actually at this point, if CM alpha is zero. Because if the lift is acting anywhere else, when alpha is changing, lift will increase and it will induce a moment about the CG. So CM alpha will not be equal to zero anymore. Do you understand that? So what I'm trying to say is if I had an airplane where let's say the alpha has changed, okay, the alpha has changed, suddenly the lift will become bigger. And if the CG is not on this line, because of this change in lift, you will have a new moment, right? Isn't it? Because of that alpha. But if I say CM alpha is equal to zero, then there's no other place that lift and drag should be acting is to be at that neutral point because anywhere else would induce a moment because of alpha and CM alpha would no more be equal to zero. But that's not the definition of the neutral point. The neutral point is the point where if you move the CG everything else the moments are equal to zero because of alpha. So that brings me to the point that the lift and drag of the airplane must be acting on the neutral point as well because if they act somewhere else then this would not be true anymore. If the CG is here and lift and drag is acting somewhere else then it would certainly be producing a moment. I mean look, uh, look up here, if lift and drag was here and you get a change in alpha, lift and drag would change because of alpha and therefore you would have a moment about the CG. But if the definition says the neutral point is the point where if I move the CG, if I move the CG to that point that CM alpha is equal to zero, then lift and drag must also be acting on the neutral point because otherwise it wouldn't work like that. Otherwise it would, because of alpha you would get a change in lift and CM alpha would not be equal to zero. So what I'm trying to say is that 
the aerodynamic forces of an airplane, they must be acting on the neutral point. If they are not acting on the neutral point, this would not be true anymore. Okay? So, you would have a lift, drag, and potentially you would have a CM uh, at the neutral point, which is constant, right? That's CM0, probably, a constant moment. Okay? And you would have, have a lift and a drag. And if you move to the CG, only then CM alpha would be equal to zero. Otherwise, CM alpha would not be equal to zero. Do you understand? So therefore, we can safely say the aerodynamic forces are calculated at the neutral point. Okay. We say lift, drag, lift, drag, acts on the neutral point. Therefore, the neutral point is often called the aerodynamic center of the aircraft. For neutral points, often called the aerodynamic center of the aircraft. So a typical airplane really looks like this then. A typical stable airplane would look like that. You would have the CG in the front, neutral point in the back, and you have a lift and a drag, and you have a constant pitching moment CM0. And this distance here, this distance, we call the static margin Kn. Okay? Typical airplane. Is that clear? Any questions here? Okay, so if you want to design an airplane and you want to put the CG to the front, how do you put the CG to the front? You put a lot of weight to the front, right? Okay, but that's not always possible to put all the weight to the front. You cannot ask all passengers to sit in the front. Okay, so what do you do then? If you, if you cannot, let's say you have the CG, can you move the neutral point? How do you move the neutral point now? Well, the neutral point is the point also where the lift and drag, the most of the lift and drag is acting. So where is the lift coming from anyway? The wings. So what do you do? You move the wings backwards. Move the wings backwards, so you open up the space between CG and neutral point. Okay? Or you can bring it to the front, but you have to be careful. If you bring it too much to the back, 
then you don't have any, enough moment arm for the horizontal tail anymore, which you also need, remember? So then you put the wings somewhere here, the neutral point and here, and then you try to bring the CG to the front. The static margin, as the name suggests, is the margin for static stability, which means you have this much space until you hit an unstable point. So let's say you have a passenger airplane and all passengers, they talk to each other and let's say, let's, let's have fun with the pilot and everyone runs to the back. What's going to happen? The CG will also move to the back. Hopefully you have, a, you have enough margin until you make the airplane unstable, even if everybody runs to the back. You see my point? So before you take off in an airplane, you look at the weights on your wheels to see where your CG is. Okay? When you, when you board an airplane, you see that the passengers are kind of distributed. And when you look closely, you might even say that more passengers are in the front than in the back. Okay? So that is to arrange the airplane in such a way that the CG is in the front. So before the airplane takes off, the, air, the pilot knows exactly where the CG of the airplane is and how much static margin he or she will have. What about, what about fuel? <coughs> If you, if you burn fuel, of course the CG might move a little bit. You will also calculate where the CG will be if you burn all your fuel. So where do you put your fuel tanks? Here at the back? Here at the front? No, somewhere here, right? So that it doesn't affect the static margin too much. Because even if the CG doesn't move to the back of the neutral point, it will change the flying characteristics because of this curve. The curve will be not like this, but it will be more like that. So it will affect the stability of the airplane no matter what. I mean, if you, move the, if you change the static margin, it will change the, 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 this curve. So this is something we don't want either, right? So you want to keep this approximately constant so that the stability characteristic of the airplane is approximately constant, okay? So you want to have the wing, the, the fuel, somewhere here. So where do you put the fuel on an airplane? Where is it? So it's on the wings, right? So you want to put it somewhere close to the CG, so it doesn't change it too much around, around the wings and so on and so forth. Any questions? You know, you look at the equations, you get a lot of information, but you also have to understand it physically, what it means and wh why did those things happen. No questions? Okay, so this is a healthy airplane. Don't forget this picture, CG at the front, neutral point at the back, lift and drag acting here, and you have a constant moment that doesn't change with alpha. So if you move this, of course, because the CG is at the front, for this airplane, CM alpha is not equal to zero. CM alpha is a negative number. So if the airplane is disturbed and has an angle of attack, what's going to happen? Lift will be bigger, and because the lift will be bigger, you will have a restoring moment. If for, for some reason the alpha becomes smaller, then lift be will become smaller, and you will again have the restoring additional in for a moment to, to come back. Okay? Is that good? Okay. Then go back to the uh, to our uh, equations again. We have Cl alpha times H minus Hn. That was the equation I had. And this is minus kn, right? That's the static margin. Static margin. Okay, here's an interesting thing. Cm alpha divided by Cl alpha is equal to h minus hn. Okay, so if you, if you write this one down, you will get Cm del Cm del alpha divided by del Cl del alpha 
right? So they will cancel and you get del CM, del, I'm sorry, CL, CL. Okay. Del CM, del CL is equal to H minus HN. That is the change of the moment because of the change in lift. And this is exactly what I have over here. If the change of the pitching moment because of the change in lift is equal to zero, which means the lift is on the CG, right? Change in lift, change in moment because of change in lift. So if the lift is changing and there's no change, then the CG is on a neutral point and that is where H is equal to HN. H is equal to HN. That also means del CM del L is equal to zero. That means this is the neutral point and it also means no change in CM due to lift. And this is kind of what we have established so far anyway. Any questions? Okay, let's give a short break, but um, I know I was, uh, I was a bit late, so let's make it a five minute break, please. Okay? Actually, didn't want to give a break now, but maybe someone needs to have a break. So, five minutes break. Please come back in uh, 37. Okay? 11.